Hello friends, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. Hello and welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for another live broadcast. It has been quite a while now, but I do appreciate all of you being patient and and being prayerful as well and uh, for praying for myself and my family. I have been sick for three weeks now, which is mm. unusual for me. I don't usually, I mean, this is like the third time I've been sick in five years or something like that, but um, unusual, but I'm glad to be topping the hill and getting over <laughs> things and yeah. getting back to normal. I am joined this evening by Zach Mason. We have been trying to do a follow-up on the prophecies and dreams um, broadcast for quite a while now so i'm really glad that it is working and um and that i'll be able to uh, hopefully my voice will stay strong for the show but i will try to limit uh what i say and we do request that those of you that have interest or if you have a commentary or a question uh, please do put it in the chat room and capitalize it, and uh, we'll try to monitor and provide answers as we go along in the broadcast. But uh, as I said, I am joined by Zach Mason. Zach, how are you doing, brother? Good, brother. Um, thank you very much for having me on once again, and I'm I'm glad to hear you are doing better. I'm sorry you've been so sick. That's not yeah, fun, I know. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, and, you know, I, I think that this broadcast and the, um, as far as you keeping tabs on the prophecies and the dreams, that this is a very important aspect of, uh, uh, you know, the end time ministry and, um, and it's something that is unique as far as you don't find a lot of people doing the work and the collective work, especially uh, in keeping tabs with a lot of, you know, visionaries and people that have been uh, in communication. And I do believe that dreams are the language of the Most High and that he has always utilized it to communicate with the prophets and to warn them of things that are coming. That's right. And even ordinary, everyday Christians, if you read the book of Acts and it, dreams and visions was the primary way uh, he would warn, teach, direct. You know, it was very common. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but before we do go um, forward, Zach, if you would, um, also wanted to let everybody know that we are a few months out, like four months out from our upcoming conference. Uh, Zach will be speaking there as well as myself and a number of other just amazing, just amazing, great researchers. Great researchers. Uh, Gary uh, Wayne Gary will actually Wayne be will actually joining us and coming down from uh, Canada. So looking forward to awesome. it. And uh, you can go to sacredwordpublishing.com. There is a Sacred Word Revealed um, conference page there to find out about the speakers. I know some of you wanted to be vendors and volunteers and you can communicate with Joy about that, Joy and Justin, at Sacred Word Publishing um, and the Contact Us page there. Um, but let me go ahead and turn it back over to you, Zach, and if you would, share uh, your websites, your, you know, your YouTubes, and where people go to find your books and your work and to support what you do. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Zach. I know you're trying to preserve your voice tonight, but if you yeah. have any questions, just pop in and Ask yeah, and again, anybody listening, put your questions in the chat and I'll try to answer those. I do have, I think, very specific info or intelligence, I think, to share uh, tonight. But uh, you, you mentioned the dreams and kind of my research and my role for those who haven't heard uh, me talk about this before. Um, you know, at, at first glance, most people approach the topic of dreams as a very uh, vaporous thing that how can we rely on those at all you know isn't that just kind of uh vague or or random and and how do we know if there's anything of value there 
And uh, I would say the first thing we should realize, I was just talking with a friend about this yesterday, is that we have the clear statement in Joel 2. It says, in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit and young people have dreams and old men or young people have visions and old men will have dreams, it says. And it's basically saying God is going to pour out his spirit and increase this kind of supernatural activity. And so what I said to him is, I know you uh, believe very strongly in scripture, and yet you're skeptical of the dreams. But if you really believe scripture, you would be looking for dreams. Because the fact that you are dismissive of them says that you don't actually believe Joel 2. But if you do believe Joel 2, you would be asking, saying to yourself, well, do I think we're in the last days? And if I do, then I should be looking for these and realizing that God said he would do that for a reason. So, and I, and I also would want to uh, just say, um, I think I've come to understand, I believe part of I, God's been revealing to me more and more of what he has for me to do and my role in things and what I'm supposed to do. And I guess what I'm kind of falling into is this role of watchman. Uh, I'm just an analyst. I'm a researcher and I, and I teach. And I've been fascinated in studying prophecy for so long. And, and uh, I don't know, he just kind of got me into this niche where I started realizing he was speaking. And I wanted to know so much more. You know, if God's speaking, I want to know what he has to say. And yeah, I just, absolutely. yeah, anytime he's speaking, I'm fascinated. I said, what is God saying? I want to know what God's saying. So I've surveyed thousands of dreams. My rough calculation, I, I haven't kept track of an exact number, but I just try to do general math of how long I've been doing, how many I watch or listen to a day. And I, 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 I estimate I'm probably uh, up to about 3,000 dreams. And I also wow. interact with um, people in, you know, face-to-face you know, in my classes and things like that that also have dreams. And they, um, their dreams are always matching what everybody else has. And that's um, why, where I start to uh, tell people, say, look, this is rel- th- th- we can get reliable data out of this because God doesn't just show things to one person. And we just have to trust that one dream. He shows everybody a piece. Nobody sees the whole thing. But the details are overlapping. Like many, many people see a lot of the same details. And when I say many, I'm talking like thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. So when you get that big a data set, um, it becomes reliable data. It becomes the point where you say, well, if this many people saw X, then maybe we should believe X is going to happen, right? right. And, uh, you know, and the, the only question at that point then is, when is X going to happen? So uh, along those lines, the uh, we've talked in the past episodes, I've talked to you about uh, uh, different, all kinds of different dreams, cover stone, Dana Coverstone's dreams, uh, Chris Reed's, and a few others. And um, most of the ones I survey are just, average everyday Christians, uh, you wouldn't even know their name. I think in our last time we were together, uh, I mentioned, though, a gentleman or a channel, a YouTube channel I had begun watching that had caught my attention. Uh, It was a channel called You Be Ready is the name of the channel. That's not the guy's real name, obviously. Um, And if you look at, uh, you go to the channel, you see pretty much all of his videos are just a screenshot of a Bible, an open Bible. And he's just reading uh, a word, a prophetic word that he says is from either the Father or from Jesus. And I want to uh, preface this by, uh, and he never shows his face, he's just reading the word out loud and he comes across as very humble. But I do want to, again, for those who aren't familiar with me, uh, I, I'm not someone who just grabs on anything anybody says. I try to approach things logically and analyze and with a healthy bit of skepticism, cautious skepticism, but I'm also willing to believe. So when someone says they have a prophetic word, I'm a bit more cautious about that because it's easy to just kind of make up a message and say, God told me X or Y. Um, Dreams or visions are a little bit, I can, it's easier to see, is this probably from God or not, because the symbol, it's really hard for people to fake symbolism or to make their details match up with what thousands of other people have seen if they haven't watched the same number. So I 
it's easier for me to separate true dreams and visions of God from somebody who's faking it. And there aren't that many people faking it on the, those. But with prophetic words, you know, people saying that they're a prophet, there's a lot of fakes out there. And most of them have big TV shows <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> or big churches. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm not interested in them other than calling them out for what they are. But when it comes, but there are, I, I, I think there's probably five people now that receive words from God, not dreams or visions, but actual prophetic words that I have come to the point that I've said, I'm, I'm pretty certain they are hearing from God. These are messages from God. And there's others I'm watching that I'm kind of sure. I think they may be, but I haven't got to the point where I'm like, sure. But there's five, there's five people I've identified that I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, and you be ready is one of them. And um, here's part of why is because his messages are, are really short. They're, the videos are always less than five minutes unless it's a longer message. But he is really not adding his own commentary. He's not adding his own um, you know, input to it. He's just saying, uh, I, I received this word from God on this date, and this is the title he gave it. These are the, this is the scripture he wanted me to associate with it, and here is what he says. And then it's a very brief letter, and it's usually signed Jesus. Uh, sometimes it's signed the Father. And that's pretty bold to do that. Uh, and then he signs off, and he, and he says— Please, uh, as usual, take this word to God in prayer and ask him to uh, confirm it for you or or not. You know, basically, he's urging you to take it to God and let God confirm it rather than he mm-hmm. just say you have to believe this. Um, but to to pretty much give a letter from Jesus or the father, that's a very bold thing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of words. It's not just a sentence. You know, we're talking about uh, paragraphs and paragraphs. So um, basically, it comes down to a question of you be ready is either a huge liar because you can I mean, you can be mistaken you, you know, you feel like God is speaking something to you. Some people will f- have feelings or impressions or they think God told them something. And they tell that to people and they might just be mistaken, you know, here in their own mind or their own heart. That can happen. But you're not going to get very detailed uh, messages that are three, four, five paragraphs long about world politics and U.S. politics and calling people to repent. and then saying this is from Jesus and this one's from the Father. You don't you don't get that level of detail and quantity uh, by accident. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm-hmm. you don't have a impression and get that kind of a message, that kind of a detailed message. So he is either a a very bold liar or he really is getting these messages from God in my opinion. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Um so I analyze that and I say, OK, so what are the possibilities? Well, there's a possibility that he is lying, that he's not getting these messages from God, that he's making them up. Um, but if so, the, the content of these messages is all about repentance and uh, calling people to repentance and calling out the sinful church, a church that's full of sin, a, a church that's asleep etc. The heart that's expressed in the messages is clearly the same heart that God does have. Uh-huh. And things God would Sounds say. Sounds like, you know, a word from Jeremiah. Yes, it, I, I believe you be ready is the Jeremiah, is a Jeremiah of our generation, if not the Jeremiah of our generation. Uh, time will tell what God does with the things he's saying, but anyways, I say, well, so, but if he was making this up, and he just said, you know, I am so mad at this lukewarm church. I'm going to make up messages from God to scare them. That doesn't make that really doesn't make sense. If you are 
upset that the church does not fear God enough, would you have such little fear of God that you would make up a message from him? Doubtful. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Right. So, okay, another another possibility. He's lying. He's made these messages up, and he's doing it to get attention. He wants people to say, oh, you be ready as a prophet of God. That could be another motive for lying. Okay. Well, but then why doesn't he show his face? Why doesn't he add his own words? And right. why doesn't he even reveal his real name? He mm-hmm. just puts the Bible up there, keeps the focus on the Bible, says, this is what God told me. You pray about it, see if he confirms it with you, and then he signs off. You know, that's not attention-seeking. He's clearly right. not attention-seeking. He's avoiding that. Right. And that's, that seems like extreme humility to me. And we know Moses was described as the most humble man on earth at the time. And God opposes the proud, but he loves the humble. So it makes sense that if God was going to give this level of detailed messages to a person, they would be a humble person. Yes. That makes sense. Uh, yes. You know, third possibility is that you be ready is crazy. You know, that he really thinks that he's receiving these messages from God, but he's not. Okay, that's another possibility. Mm. But I'm in a unique position to evaluate the content of them in comparison with all the other thousands of dreams that I've watched. Right, right. Okay. And he gets so many details right, so many little tiny details of what he says match exactly all these different dreams out there, obscure dreams that people don't even know that I that I just know about because I've studied so many. Mm-hmm. And for him, and I just know, I'm in a position to know that for him to get that many right, all those details right, it either has to be from God or he has studied as many dreams as I have. And frankly, if that were the case, he would have to have taken better notes than I have because I don't think I could do as good a job as he has. <laughs> I mean, that's my sincere analysis. I really don't. Like he says something. That's, oh, yeah, I remember that. One. I remember someone else saw that. And, and, you know, I'm just very, very impressed with him. And I really do believe uh, he's hearing from God. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm operating um, at that level. Oh, no, now, that I want to say... Um, Even when I say I believe somebody is uh, hearing from God, I'll never like I I, I explain it to this way. Somebody I said, you know, for me, because they were they were wondering about do we treat modern day prophets or these dreams and visions? Do we treat them like the same authority as scripture? I said, no. I said, scripture is very clear. It's established. The church is all, you know, for, for thousands of years. We've all agreed this is the word of God. That's an A-plus level, authority level. Uh Um, Everybody else, for me, starts at a D level. And then then the moment I hear that they've spoken something falsely, they drop to an F. But Uh certain people um, prove over and over again consistency, you know, and I have get reason to believe, yes, this person is hearing from God, and I'll raise them up to maybe a B or B-plus level. And for me, that's where you be ready is is a B or B plus level. It doesn't mean I'm absolutely saying he's authoritative. I'm just giving it a lot of respect and I'm listening, but I'm always listening in conjunction with scripture to make sure there's no conflict with scripture. And because obviously he could be hearing from God every day. And then the next day he might go off the deep end or he could, you know, and make something up or he could, he could, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he could uh, just hear wrong or something, you know? So And you have to be cautious. Yes. In the way you tread as well. And there's always the problem of interpretation. You know, we he can be given an accurate word of God, and then we interpret it different wrongly, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, there's that. So, but it is, I do, uh, the overall message of you be ready is repent. Okay. Jesus and the Father are both almost screaming at us to wake up and repent. Right. Is the message. And the tone is very serious. Um, 
and I would start, um, I think there's a couple before I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read actual predictions, actual things that he has said and how these are telling us details about what I believe is a coming civil war to this country. Um, one more thing I want to say, uh, there was one more evidence, internal evidence of UB Ready's um, um, words is that, that there are a, a, most of the what he predicts is still in the future. So you can't tell, you know, if it's come true or not, because it's not time for it yet. Uh, but there are a few things that I've seen that he predicted that have come true. So with the amount of information we're able to, he's been proven already to be a true prophet in that sense, which is the biblical test. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and it's uh, yeah. one that should yeah. make you know people more uh, aware and concerned with what he's saying. Um, yes. Because, I, I, you know, just bringing up Jeremiah again, he was not popular in his day and age because everything that he was saying, uh, even though it was very much real and truthful, that's not what people wanted to hear. That's absolutely and right. We are, we are in that age as well. Yes, and I would um, ask all of your listeners to uh, pay attention for a second here. Make sure you pay attention right now and uh, listen with an open mind. Because if this is God speaking, uh, we need to allow him to correct our perspective on our own politics and our right. own country. And I recommend everybody go and listen to at least a few of UB Ready's words and ask yourself if you don't feel like that is the voice of Jesus. Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Right. And every, every Christian so far that I've asked to listen to one of UB Ready's words has come back and said, dude, I, do, I think that is Jesus. I, I, I feel like that's him talking. So that's another confirmation I have. So um, with that said, um, with everybody understanding, I'm not, I, I just don't feel comfortable saying, absolutely, this is a prophet of God. It's authoritative. You got to listen to it. Um, I want to just approach this tonight as if he is speaking from God, like if he is conveying a message from God, so we can all learn uh, what God might be saying. And... Um, now, one more uh, caveat before we get into the actual words is I, I tend to believe that I suspect that most of your listeners on this channel, maybe not all, but a lot of them will probably have similar um, political views and, and voting records as to myself, which would be that of a conservative Christian. Conservative, yes. Okay. I have always voted... Uh, conservative, Republican, for a number of reasons, uh, all of which I, th I felt like were biblical values, but one big reason is that is that of uh, pro-life, right? Right. I, I feel like pro being uh, abortion is the biggest issue or has been the biggest issue that would be the most heinous in God's eyes, the most yes. the worst. And, and so that the issue— murder of babies, I mean, come on. Yes. It's hard to get worse than that. Right. Right. So that issue alone has said, I have to vote pro-life. I have to vote for whoever is supporting that. And from that end, I voted for uh, Donald Trump both times. And I've supported Trump. I have not. I wouldn't call myself a follower of Trump. Um, he has an ego. You know, he says things that are not necessarily uh, very Christian. Uh, he seems to be a propagandist at times. There's some flaws, definite flaws. But I've supported him because I loved what he did uh, with appointing pro-life judges. He kept his promises and that, in my opinion. I love how he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, et cetera, et cetera. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. Uh, that said, and I, I just want people to understand that about me so they understand that uh, uh, when I read you these words, we're going we're gonna to see that God— does not seem to have a good opinion of Donald Trump. He does not have a good opinion about Joe Biden either. <laughs> right. In fact, at one point, he, he, and he clearly, see, you know, calls Biden and Kamala Harris worse. 
but he's not pleased with Donald Trump either. And I think as we read these words, uh, we're going to understand why, exactly why. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other things, though, still are a little bit mysterious to me, but we'll talk about that. Uh, but here's what I think that one, th- I'm going to read this one excerpt here. And for anybody that is thinking, uh, I can't believe it, uh, he's going to say God would criticize Donald Trump. Donald Trump's God's man. You know, if you if that's your heart, check yourself and listen to these words and understand why God might be saying this, because this is this is what I think God said through you. Be ready in one message very recently. He said the things coming to the political system in this nation uh, hold will on, be sorry. okay. Hold on, we're at break, brother. Back. Sure, yes, sir. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll pick it up on the other side. My hero, that's who I chase. Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. So I turned 25, 10 years later, that same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. No, no, no. She said, why? I said, because my hero is me at 35. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero's always 10 years away. I'm never going to be my hero. I'm not going to attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. So to any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to, and whoever it is we're chasing, to that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. To that I say just keep living, huh? It's amazing. On May 26 through 28, 2023, Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia. Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia, of deceptive propaganda replacing truth. That's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly, the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. Imagine that's got to be planets like ours So conceive of a 
face on the surface of Mars So in need of a meaning and purpose we fall And indeed they believe that they might be our gods Or that maybe with time we'll do right and evolve And eventually reach what they seek And then solve all the problems of man But they really don't know that they fall And the works of our hands are but just filthy rags So we travel the lands to dig up our past Time elapses and with it are much of the facts Some imagine that gods came in All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Zach, and let you get started with this prophetic message. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Dan. Well, uh, as I was, let me uh, continue. I was about to read this um, word from his one of his most recent messages, and this one, uh, I think, just sets the tone. Like, God is telling us where he stands, and we need to, I think, be lined up with him. But he says, the thing's coming to the political system in this nation will be turned upside down. Surprise, I am neither red nor blue, by which he means neither Republican nor Democrat. Yes. He, he says, I am holy and just. Two things this nation is not. I will upend the system in the coming days. And I think that is a message we need to take very, all of us believers, all of us who are awake need to take very, very seriously is God is against the red, just like he's against the blue. I've seen a number of dreams and visions where he has set, he's, he's done, he's employed symbolism to teach the same thing. Some, like I remember one specifically where he took in this dream, the person saw the American flag being ripped into pieces and the red and the blue were burnt up and the white was raptured to heaven. Mm. Okay, so he is saying that there are three groups, the red, the white, and the blue. Mm. And we are not in the coming civil war. I'll just say this very clearly. I've. Every single dream and vision I've seen and UB Ready's words, all of it, the message is consistent. When the Civil War comes, if you pick up a gun and you go try to fight for the conservative side, you will be killed and you will be an embarrassment to God. He does not want you to do that. He, we are to be part of the white, the holy and the just. Uh -huh. We are to stay out of the fight between the two political sides. It makes complete sense to me because it's controlled opposition. So, yes. So, um, anyways, but now let me get into the actual words. So, what I did is um, I I noticed that in UB Ready's words, every now and then there would be because he's had a lot of them. Uh, there's there was a, references to kings. There was mentions of kings, and these kings were kings of the united states and uh but they were kind of scattered throughout the messages over time so what i did is i downloaded uh transcripts of all of his words uh and and then i did a global search for the word king and so i could just get the everything to referring to our politics and things i could pull out those words and see if i could get a story from it and, and put together a story. Real quick, I'm gonna answer this question. I see uh, Sonny is asking, are we allowed to protect ourselves and our family? I would say, of course, that's that's self-defense. Self-defense is, um, you know, allowed under the law of Moses. And, uh, you know, if you were drafted and forced to fight, that would be possibly different. That's like obeying the law in that sense. You have to, that's also in the law of Moses. Yeah, and you would always need to take that uh, to God in prayer, but, and in an emergency, you might not have time to do that. I have always said, like, I'm here to serve God's kingdom. I'm not here. What I'm what I'm here to do is do love and justice. You know, if I see someone attacking a woman on my street and I have a gun, I'm going to go save her. You know, or I'll save a kid. I'll save anybody that's being attacked, anyone innocent being attacked. I'm going to go save them and I'll use force if I have to. What I'm not going to try to save is the United States of America. Right. I'm not going to try to save 
a government or a country that God has condemned the just judgment because it's futile. It's like fighting against God. You know, you think in Jeremiah's day, would Jeremiah have tried to save an innocent person if he had a sword next to him? He probably would have. That would have been ungodly to let them suffer if you can save them. But he was telling Judah to submit to Babylon, to not resist. And uh, because that was the political thing, he, he was not saying, you know, because to fight for Judah against Babylon was to resist the judgment that God had declared. Mm -hmm. So different, different categories, in my opinion. Um, and uh, let's see, I see someone talking about dream. There was lots of dreams and visions in the Old Testament as well. Um, all right. But rather than go off on that, Tan, I need to start reading this because there's a lot to talk about. Um, now, if you on my YouTube channel, and that's if you want to hear more from me, that's where I hang out. You know, I, I do. I haven't done one for a little bit because I've been taking a sabbatical. Uh, God asked me to rest. So I'm doing that. And I haven't had until now a lot to talk about either. But um, on uh, just look for Zach Mason on YouTube and you'll find my channel on there. I talk a lot about what I call phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four of the Red Horseman in America. The Red Horseman being the Red Horseman of the book of Revelation, Revelation 6. And I came up with those phases based on what I was seeing in the dreams. And I was, from the dreams themselves, I was able to put them in order. Uh, it took me a while, but I finally figured out, yes, this is the order. And since then, uh, it's been confirmed over and over and over again. Um, so phase one, is a period of severe civil unrest. Phase two, the difference is, is when it becomes an actual military war, like civil war. And these words that I want to read tonight, I believe are explaining to us more details about how and why we get into the civil war. Um, so I'm going to start reading. The first one the first message that meant that he that he referred to a king. Uh, he says he was given this uh, message on January fifth, twenty eighteen. And the name of this message, if you're looking for it on YouTube, is "I will put my fear in their hearts." And it said what he said was, "I will deliver your king to be taken away." And so this was 2018. So the king at that time would be Donald Trump. And Donald Trump was taken away uh, in 2020 or 2021. He says, I will deliver your king to be taken away and give you a reprobate queen, which would be Kamala Harris. Worse than Jezebel, because you refuse to repent. So there's not a lot of detail in that particular word. This was the first one. It says, I will deliver your king to be taken away because you refuse to repent. So he's saying that Trump was removed from office because of a lack of repentance. That is what God is saying is the reason. And he's also telling us that the coming reprobate queen will be worse than Jezebel, which is significant. Um, the next word I want to I quote from is dated. He said he received this word on uh April 23rd, uh, 2018, and uh, the title of this word was The Voice Silenced. He said, my son, the truth is what came upon a rebellious and stiff-necked people will also come upon my people today. For they will not listen to the warnings being shouted out from every watchman. Instead, they follow a corrupt king, which would be Donald Trump, because of the date, and lying Hananias, uh, which would be prosperity preachers, uh, to their doom. And why do I say the Hananias would be prosperity preachers? Because when God is referring to Hananiah, he, he, he's also in that message he the the scripture that was focused on was one from jeremiah and he has he's had you be ready uh quoting a lot from jeremiah and in the book of jeremiah there was a was a false prophet named hananiah 
And Hananiah was preaching the opposite of Jeremiah. He was preaching, he was preaching prosperity in the future. He was, he was saying that, that God was going to come through. He was going to give Judah victory. Babylon would not win, um, et cetera. You could almost, I mean, to be very crass, you could say he was saying, make Judah great again, was what the Hananiah was saying. God is saying they follow a corrupt king, Trump. And when I say the name Trump, I'm inserting that myself. He, he just says king. And I'm doing the date. Uh, I'm identifying as Trump because of the date. And lying Hanani Hananias, which would be prophets who are preaching uh, prosperity in the future. Okay, or good times in the future. Now, why he calls Trump corrupt in that word, I don't understand. Okay, I do not understand why, and I don't have an explanation for it. I'm just reporting that is what was said. You know, God knows him better than we do. I hope that he does not refer to something like being part of the Epstein network, because I don't believe that at all. I don't believe Trump is immoral in that way or corrupt in that way. But I don't have knowledge about why he says that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, May 2nd, 2018, the message was called Turmoil is Coming. He says, just as Israel did in the past and will soon face it again for the time of Jacob's trouble is near and great testing for the congregation. Um, now, Jacob's trouble is, a, is another uh, prophetic phrase and it is referring to the tribulation is basically a time of trouble for the people of God, for the people of Israel. And as we've mentioned on previous uh, times here, Judah is only part of Israel and they are, the Jews are Judah and they're in the modern nation of Israel, but there are the lost tribes of Israel who are also going to be suffering uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which God is saying is going to be happening here. So God is identifying much of the United States as being part of Jacob. He says, uh, for the time of Jacob's trouble is near and great testing for the congregation. This foolish king, which would be Trump because of the date, has beaten the bear with a rod of iron, and the bear would be Russia, and the bear is now awake and hungry one deception after another has this king put over my children. Wake up, my children. See the writing on the wall. For this nation has been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And Jimbo, sorry, we're not talking about dreams here. This is a prophetic word. And uh, as we, if you listen to the beginning, I gave the evidence of why we're considering it probably reliable. So, um, Again, the uh, now exactly what I, th I researched this and I don't have a specific interpretation as to what God is referring to as how he's beaten the bear. Um, what Trump did to Russia that kind of woke him up, unless it's referring to actions by Trump's government, the, the State Department and things like that, that might have even been done without Trump's uh, active knowledge to basically uh, try to get Ukraine to join NATO, which is the cause of the current war. The efforts to do that might have begun back then. I don't know. I'm, I have more uh, confidence in some of the other things that we're about to talk about. So in um, June 13th, 2018, a, a word called aftermath, he says, my son, what in the what the world just witnessed between the meeting of the two kings was a grand deception and the the meeting of the two kings is referring to the summit that donald trump had with uh uh kim you know the the leader of north korea north korea yeah yeah okay so god is saying that the meeting between donald trump and the North Korean leader was a, a grand deception. He says the aftermath of this meeting may look good on the outward appearance, but in the spirit, it was two lying kings trying to bolster each other up with pride. No true peace will come out of this meeting, only war. The American king, Trump, 
thinks he's the greatest peace deal maker known to man, his pride and arrogance will be his downfall, but he will take the nation down with him. So this is a commentary from the past, from five years ago is when this message was given. Uh, but it's, it's got predictions about the future, too. So a, co a couple of comments here. Uh, if, if you just analyze that summit between Donald Trump and Kim of North Korea, it was two lying kings. They were just doing a media show. There was no treaty signed. There no missiles. No, nothing was reduced. North Korea did kind of stop testing after their missiles for a little while after that, but there was no meaningful peace or anything that came out of it. No progress. It was just two guys slapping each other on the back in front of cameras and acting like they were best friends right after Trump had called Kim a rocket man. So if you, if you kind of step out of your uh, affection for Trump for a minute and think about that, this is an accurate description of what happened. And Trump does think he's the greatest peace deal maker known to man. That's true. But um, something important is God says no true peace will come out of this meeting, only war. Only war. I uh, know, Joseph, you may be joining us late. This is from uh, UB Ready. It's a channel on YouTube. It's not Kim Clemente. Um, that indicates that North Korea is going to be part of the war that impacts this country, which many others have seen. So that is accurate. He also says, but he will take the nation down with him. So it's saying that Trump is going to take the nation down with him. Now, I, that seems to be hypercritical of Trump as if it's only Trump. I can assure you God is not speaking kindly of the other side. Um, and, uh, we're going to read about that, but he is uh, indicating that Trump's pride is going to, uh, be part of the problem is going to be part of the cause of the, of the defeat of this or the, the destruction of this nation. Okay. In, uh, August 23rd, 2018 from a message called we deserve this. It said, he says, the king of this nation is full of lies like his father, and he will be brought down. Now, I don't know exactly what God is referring to there. I know the date tells me this is about Donald Trump. But I don't understand why he says, like his father. I'm, you know, I have had an affection for Donald Trump, and I care about him. I, I love the guy. I, I don't like the thought that God is talking about him like this. I've had to wrestle with it personally but that's what's uh, been said and i don't know uh, if this can is I comment here real quick yeah. um, sure um this is something that um i had reported a, a long time ago and and you, you know pe people can check um sources but there seems to be a, a relationship a bloodline uh, of affiliation between donald trump and hillary clinton and whether that's true or not, uh, I don't know. But I, in my work, I do, you know, I speak about the seed of Cain and how the, you know, the, uh, seems like a lot of the presidents are from the same bloodlines are connected to the, the English royals, uh, the people that sit on the thrones of the world today mm -hmm. all seem to be from the same bloodline. Uh, Christ spoke about the murderers of the prophets from um, Cain to Zacharias, you know, linking them with the the seed of the serpent. We have the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And so, you know, in my opinion, it could be something of that nature. Yeah, that could be. And he like said this this one is kind of cryptic and it may be, you know, reminded me of when Jesus said to the Pharisees that they were sons of the devil. Exactly. And I. And I and I wonder if that's what he's referring to. I don't want right. to believe. I personally don't want to believe about Donald Trump. I do. I do believe that he is. And and in the rest of the words we're going to see, God is not as critical of him as he is Biden and others. But God's standard is higher, and he is. It's kind of like the kings of Judah that were 
I think decent Kings, but who did bad things like messed up mm-hmm. at the end. I think that is what God is referring to, but some of this, uh, may not fully understand until we get to heaven. Right. Um, I, I and, definitely do believe that, you know, Trump was utilized in a prophetic manner. Um, definitely, you know, with the, the 70 years, uh, for the Jerusalem and the recognition of, mm-hmm. and then the, the things that, uh, you know, Jonathan Kahn talks about yes. with his name, Trump and all of that. Uh, right. so definitely, there is some, you know, prophetic Cyrus type yes. stuff connected with him. So, yes. All right. Well, this next one, I think, recalibrated me. And uh, I hope that your listeners will can hear it with humility and listen. And because I know what we do a lot is uh, we focus a lot on the political leaders and the evil that they've done. And subconsciously or deep down or even consciously, we believe that all of the bad things and the destruction that is happening and beginning is happening uh, because of our leaders being corrupt. And this next word, I think, says the truth. So on September 6th, 2018, in a message called uh, Cry War, says the world doesn't see how war is what they have all wanted what does not the government represent the people the government of this king trump wants war so do the people the governments are manipulating everything from the money to the food they are cutting off food to nations that will starve without it now remember this was from 2018 and some of the moves they've made, like against Sri Lanka, uh, you know, had not begun yet. So this was a prediction then. But the key here is he's this is a biblical principle. When a country has bad leaders, like a dictator or oppressive leaders, um, he's put them in place to represent what the people are and that people have the government they deserve. Mm hmm. That's a biblical principle. Mm-hmm. And so I th- what God is saying is we pr- probably should stop thinking that, I mean, we really need to realize a political solution isn't going to solve anything because the, the leaders are all corrupt because the American right. people are all corrupt. And I want to tell you, I have seen this like never before. Um, I own several businesses and I am seeing a selfishness, a self-centeredness in my employees that are all supposedly strong Christians, conservative Christians, and an ego and a pride like I've never seen before. Hmm. And my I, I'm, I'm exhorting everyone, all of us, all Christians to seek humility and be selfless. Try to turn the other cheek. Try to really think about other people first. Do not make selfish decisions. Do not be self-centered. You know, it is the people that is the problem. It's not the leaders. All right. We, the American people, we are, we are prideful. We are all corrupted. And not just in the sense of we're all sinners. The American people have become very corrupt. Um, can I share with you a real quick story? Sure. Yes. Um, I had read this in one of the recent Thracian Chronicles, uh, Ancient Stories, and it was talking about the fall of the Thracian Empire, which was a very ancient Christian empire preceding the Sumerians even by uh, 1,500 to 2,000 years. But the reason it said in that the text that the the nation, the empire was brought down is because the people had abandoned the the work of the Levites uh, and their work in providing you know, taking care of the orphan, the widowed, mm-hmm. the poor, and that the people had 
quit even giving, uh, donating, and you know, giving of their first fruits of harvest and and honoring the you know those Levitical feast days. And so, the Most High brought down misery upon the country and allowed them to be invaded and attacked, but yeah. warned them and then told them afterward that the reason for all of this occurring to them was because they had uh, abandoned the work of supporting the poor and in you know not being prideful but in giving and sharing because you know the way that he, the way that he supports the people in the church and the world is by blessing others uh, through the blessings that he provides people mm -hmm. and when they forget that uh, right uh, right, all right. We'll, we'll be right back for a second on may 26 through 28 2023 sacred word revealed comes to atlanta georgia Purpose to unveil esoteric controversies. Conflicts abound in this final generation. After many millennia of deceptive propaganda replacing truth, that's why we must join together as a remnant to sharpen one another as iron sharpeneth iron. To test all things and to declare together openly, the Messiah is Adonai. Get your tickets now at sacredwordrevealed.com and join us for another exciting, rejuvenating, and challenging weekend of worship, fellowship, and discussion with the truth-seeking community. When Justin and I found out we were having a little girl, we named her Eliana and started dreaming of what life would be like with her, where we would take her, what we would teach her, and of course, what we would read to her. One day we walked around a bookstore looking for books we might want for her and found nothing. So we started brainstorming what exactly we would want. Even from a young age, we wanted her to know and understand the heart of God and hidden truths that are in ancient biblical manuscripts like the book of Enoch and the idea of the Prophecy for Children series was born. Justin got hard to work and Praise Yah released the Prophecy for Children series. We are grateful for the support and amazing feedback from others who have been wanting the same for their children. With our newest addition to the family, Ezra, we also added Enoch's judgment of the giants to this prophecy series. We're excited to keep writing books for our children to share with our truth-seeking family. To order these books today, please check out sacredwordpublishing.com slash collections slash children's dash store.
برش داره back everybody for a second hour that one certainly went by quick yeah. and i feel like we're a little bit behind so i'm gonna just turn it back over to you zach and all right so we can good, continue yes. marching forward well i know this we're still kind of like in the older message but we will get into the newer stuff soon but i think it's important to understand god's perspective on a lot of this and what he's saying um the uh on November 14th, 2018, in a message called Run with the Horses, uh, God said, uh, according to you, be ready. He said, my son, I will bring down every idol that man has placed above me, including a self-righteous lying king, which would be Donald Trump because of the date. He said, I placed him in power to give my people a chance to prepare for what is about to come. Yet they did not heed my alarms and went more into the world. So that, again, all makes sense to me. Um, he's obviously a lot more critical of Trump than I would have expected. The next message explains to me why. Uh, but he says, but this is consistent, and it's consistent with what God did in Egypt with Moses and the people of Israel leaving Egypt. God brought judgment specifically designed to defeat false gods, idols. He defeated the gods of Egypt. And the judgments that have been proclaimed that are coming to the United States, one by one, they take away all of our false gods. The first god that, uh, um, the first idol that God is going to take away from the United States is the god of money. He's going to, that's the first event is the economy collapsing. But he is, uh, uh, implying here, and I think he says it later more clearly, that many Christians have made Donald Trump into an idol. Well, how do we know if we've done that? Well, if you're looking to Donald Trump or any political person as your salvation, as the solution right. to save the country, you've made him an idol. Uh, I voted for him because I wanted pro-life judges, but I didn't vote for him because I think, you know, because I like... He's a savior. Think, right. Okay. Um, he also says why he put uh, Trump in power. He said, I put him in power to give my people time to repent. So this plan that we know the World Economic Forum is putting in motion, this seems to indicate that, which is what I've always known, that Trump was a surprise. Like Clinton, Hillary was supposed to win. So I believe the World Economic Forum's uh, program that we're going through right now would have begun back in 2016 under Hillary Clinton much faster, but God put a pause on it and he made Trump win to give us a pause, to give us time to prepare or a time to repent. And what he's saying is we didn't do it. The America did not repent. And uh, this matches the very first message we just read where he said he took Trump away because we refused to repent. And that also implies that there must have been good things about Trump because otherwise, why was Trump, why did, why did God take Trump away as kind of a punishment? Because we didn't repent, right? Mm -hmm. So while he's not happy with Trump, he's recognizing that Trump was not bad like the others. Now, on November 15th, 2018, in a message called The Great Divide. This explains, I think, one of the main things that God is angry with Donald Trump about, and it also explains why we're going to have a civil war. It says, I will divide this land for dividing my land. So this is what's been seen in many other dreams, that uh, the reason God causes a civil war here is because we force a two-state solution in Israel. So God says, you divide my land, I will divide yours. So is that on the horizon? Do you see that? Um, also, I wanted to ask you one other yeah. thing. That, um, sure. Just um, as far as Kim Clement, because I know that mm -hmm. Trey Smith covers a lot of his work. Uh, I haven't really, I know that he was and had 
predicted, you know, Donald Trump rises, uh, his rise to presidency, but just, Correct. you know, your thought. Well, and obviously that happened, and we're going to see that these prophecies that UB Ready has are going to tell us that Trump is going to be coming back. Uh-huh. He will rise again, but that is part of our downfall. It's not a part of our mm-hmm. salvation. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a lot of uh, people in the charismatic movement, a lot of prophets or people that have received dreams and visions that they've seen Donald Trump come back in power and they're seeing something that's true, but then they're interpreting it that as something good. Right, right. And they've seen accurately, but then they've interpreted wrongly. Mm. Trump coming back into power is not ultimately going to be a good thing. Um, and, and we're going to get to why, but it says, uh, I will divide this land for dividing my land. Those advisors that surround the king, which would be Trump, have lied to him, given him false words they say are from me. Now, uh, the only advisor I know, I mean, there, there, I'm sure there's more than one, but the only one I know for sure was considered a strong spiritual advisor, Donald Trump, would, would have been Paula White. So I'm imagining this must be referring at least in part to her. Uh, it says, this king, Trump, this king, which would be Trump, believes the lies and will be the cause of the land division. The previous king, Obama, caused the division of the people and with great arrogance takes pride in that. The current king, Trump, takes great pride in the ultimate peace deal that seals the judgment on this nation. Okay, that's a key phrase. So the peace deal that is being referenced here would be the Abrahamic Accords, the Abraham Accords, okay? But this message was given in 2018, and the Abraham Accords were not a thing yet, right? Those didn't get signed until 2020. But I understand now what God is saying. God is saying that Trump is going to be the cause of the division of the land of Israel, even though he's not in power when it's going to happen. And the reason is, is because he sowed the seed of the division of the land with the Abraham Accords. Now, why this was being, why God gave this message in 2018, the timing, I researched this. Um, and basically what it was is, in uh, Trump had announced a Mideast peace plan in 2018. I think it was in the summer of 2018, he announced it. And I remember being very happy uh, with what he proposed, because in the peace plan, he said that the United States was going to support Israel annexing 30% of the West Bank. Okay. And uh, that would have been amazing. That would have been consistent with what God wanted. I mean, obviously, God wants all of the West Bank to become part of Israel permanently. But it was a great step in the right direction where Trump was going to tell Israel, hey, we're not going to do this two-state solution anymore. You're going to actually take part of the West Bank and make it yours and call it yours officially. That would have been pleasing to God, in my opinion. It wouldn't have been the whole way, but at least it would have been a good start. But what happened in reality is Trump announced that in the summer of 2018. And of course, there was a lot of resistance to it in Europe, in our own State Department, among Democrats, even Republicans, the Palestinians, of course, the Middle East. You know, of course, the whole world was against it because the whole world's against Israel. Mm -hmm. And what happened is the United Arab Emirates then made a counterproposal in Uh, I believe September of 2018, two years before they actually signed the Abraham Accords. And they basically said, hey, uh, how about this? How about if you don't annex any land from the West Bank, we will sign an agreement to normalize relations with Israel. We will sign a peace treaty with Israel, saying we recognize them as a country, we want to have diplomatic relations, all these things that Israel has longed for for so many decades. 
And this is where Trump betrayed God or went against God because Trump went for it. Trump sacrificed the annexation of West Bank to Israel in order to secure this peace deal from the UAE that would record where they would have diplomatic relations with Israel. And that was what became the Abraham Accords, where other a few other Muslim nations also signed them. And all those did was basically say, hey, we recognize you, Israel. We're going to be at peace with you. So in essence, Trump had the opportunity to help Israel become stronger and solidify its place and to actually gain back some of his land. And he gave that up from his own ego to secure the peace deal that he thought he could get because people were telling you, you can't get the other one. You can't do that. But we can do this one. And all Trump really cared about, apparently, was getting a deal that he could brag about. Yeah, getting some through. How did the so, Israelites feel about that? Uh, I don't know. I don't. Uh, all I'm reading here is what God feels about it. And this is the oh, same okay. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the same thing that Israel did in the past, where they would sacrifice. They would not rely on God. Instead, they relied on the peace treaty with Egypt to protect them from Babylon. Mm-hmm. It's the same sin. So Trump's choice to do that, he did a great thing by moving the embassy to Jerusalem, and then he completely fell on his face by giving up this opportunity to get land in order to get glory for himself. And that is why I think God is so mad at Trump, one of the reasons. Mm, okay. Okay. Now, skip forward an entire year, November 21st, 2019, from a a message called Judgment on Washington, D.C. So this was one year before the 2020 election. Does my son hear the word of the Lord, for I have passed judgment on the great city of Washington, D.C., with all its corruption, sin, and idol worship. I will utterly destroy the city. There will not be left standing any monument to man or beast. I will burn the city with fire that cannot be extinguished. The men and women who have partaken in her sin will perish in the fire. Even though this king, Trump, puts on a good front, I see his heart. He is not what he seems to portray. He is steeped in idolatry and mysticism and has the gift of persuasion, which allows him to lie. But no one sees the lie. I allowed this man in office because he reflects the hearts of my people. My people are sinful idolaters and prideful to the core. This is their hearts, and this is the king's heart. I will bring down this king and humble his heart. He will lose everything, including the city. Now, that is very, very critical of Trump. It's also very, very critical of us, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but there is one positive, uh, you know, nugget there. He says, I, not only, he says, I will bring down this King. And I think that's referring to the future 2020 election, even though, yes, I believe it was stolen as well as most people do. Regardless, he's not in office. Mm -hmm. Um, but he says, and humble his heart. And that encourages me to some degree because There are dreams where they've seen Trump calling people in the future to come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, like in a revival. So my hope is that this is referring to a future time when when God will humble Trump like he did Nebuchadnezzar and that Trump may repent. Um, All right. Now, uh, another seven months forward uh, message from 2020, June 30th of 2020. Uh, This was in the middle of the uh, Black Lives Matter protests. A message was called The Tempest, and it just simply says, do not look for the King Trump to bring about anything but iron yokes. Captivity is your future and submission is the law. Very brief word. And he's saying, don't look, don't put your hope in a president. The whole nation is going into captivity. Okay, next message, one month before the election, a message called Caught Unaware. 
on October 15th of 2020. This is very short, but it sums up the whole thing. God says right before the election of 2020, he says, America has not repented from the king down. So when God is asking for repentance, he is asking for repentance from the king down to all of us, not just a few of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a message given in 2021, uh, January 2nd of 2021. Uh, this was four days before uh, January 6th, you know, the day the storming of the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. uh, the message is called House of Shiloh, for anybody that wants to look it up. He says, my son, many false prophets say America will be healed. America will be holy again. America will be great again. They say the king, Trump, will do this, and the next four years will be glorious. I say unto you, this nation is evil to its core. The men in control have black hearts. The people are blind and reprobate, following the false promises of the false prophets. Thus saith the Lord, the God of the universe, America, your time is up. You will never be great again. You will only know despair. Wow. That's a very hard word. Yeah, it reminds me of that, uh, like the false prophet, like all that QAnon stuff that yes. was going on and that everybody was you know, so hyped up about because back then um, I was talking about even how, you know, Trump was, uh, even though the same family, but yet I still believe that there was this prophetic Cyrus, you know, connection yeah. with all of what was going on. But I was not a big, you know, supporter, believer in him being the savior certainly yeah. and uh i took a lot of heat for that you know because there was a lot of a lot of christians that were gung-ho trump yeah. and he's the he's the hope and change that obama was supposed to yeah. be and right uh, so so it's really you know i'm surprised at the message of what you are delivering this evening but for me, it fits right along with what I've always oh, no. uh, felt. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, and even with QAnon, I always understood QAnon was a, was like a CIA uh, counter op, like it was a counterintelligence op, uh, because uh, because QAnon was exposing real, like it was talking about real stuff. Right, like right, right. The XC network, but they mm -hmm. were intentionally. Uh, leading people onto the wrong path about it or taking them a little too far or making them think you don't have to worry about this because it's going to be taken care of for you. Yeah. Like the, the drain, the swamps was happening. Yeah. You know, yes. So and people relax because they thought there was white hats somewhere doing something. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just defanged people. All right, right. So this message, this is the first message that was received after Biden took office. So Trump is uh, now out of office. This was January 25th, 2021. And the message was called, I told you so. This is a little longer one. He says, my son, and this has some detail. This is some details about things that, may, that will be happening in the future. He says, my son, I have spoken to you and many others. Yet because my hand has not slapped down hard on this nation, many have doubted my words. But I tell you now, I have removed an evil king, Trump. And I want to I want to um, clarify one thing. Evil, we think of that as meaning like of hell. And in the at least the King James Bible, and a lot of time evil, it can mean that, but it can also mean troublesome. Like a lot of times in the Bible, when you see the word evil, uh, delivers from evil, it is really meaning delivers from trouble. Mm. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and read it as it says. It says, but I tell you now, I have removed an evil king, Trump, and replaced him with an extremely evil king, Biden, 
Mm-hmm. While my children are still in shock, I will replace the extremely evil king, Biden, with the most evil woman, which would, I think, be Kamala Harris. Yeah, makes sense. I tell you now, I told you, so I have given you, my children, much time to repent, yet none have. Instead, they cry out for the king, Trump, who led them into captivity. I have sent the great delusion, and my children have fallen into the snare. Only my remnant have not been deceived by this delusion. Many in this nation have placed their faith in a man, Trump. Did I not tell them I will remove everything they place ahead of me? I am a jealous God and will have no gods ahead of me. I have taken away your freedoms. I have taken away your sports. This is uh, still a lot of coronavirus lockdowns were still in place at this time. I have taken away your sports. I have taken away your jobs, yet you have not repented. I have taken away your faces and hid them behind a mask. I have taken away your gatherings. I have taken away your money, yet no one has repented. Now I have taken away your king, Trump, and I see how much you love him over me. My son, I have given these people a king after their own heart. I told you so many times now, darkness descends upon this nation and my confused children are in total fear. I also told you this, thus saith the Lord, the dark times are now here and will get much darker. Soon my children will be hunted down and forced into captivity. Many will perish as the evil one declares war on my saints. My son, I told you what will come to pass, yet because what I said did not happen in your time frame, many doubted. You are not alone. Many of my chosen have doubted, but stand by. The shaking is coming. I told you so. I have heard my watchman's cries of repentance, and I have forgiven you. Continue to seek me, and I will speak. For the evil that is coming upon this nation will not let up nor go away. This nation called Mystery Babylon will fall in one hour. And that's the quote. There's more. I'm reading excerpts from these from these words. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not reading the whole thing. So if people want to hear the whole word, they should go look for these messages and and Mm -hmm. watch themselves. Okay. Uh, All right, one final a, comment yeah, real quick is yeah. it reminds me of Saul too. You know, when yeah. the nation of Israel declared they wanted a king and yes. they wanted to be like all the other nations mm-hmm. and they turned to him instead of God. Um, and you know, for, yeah. yeah, and Trump even could be compared with Saul in some ways, like right. not waiting yeah, on the Lord, fully, doing things right. for his own glory. Yeah, and not right. fulfilling as he was yes. supposed to. Right. Yes. That's a very good comparison. I hadn't thought about that. That's really a good comparison. I mm-hmm. think about that more. All right. Um, so a word from um, February 14th of all day, Valentine's Day, 2021. So two years ago. A word called, and you answered not. He said, my son, I will make America as Shiloh. And Shiloh is the place where the the Ark of the Covenant, the tabernacle, was kept for a time. Mm-hmm. And so what this means is Shiloh was wiped bare, like it was totally destroyed and wiped bare. So he said, my son, I will make America as Shiloh, as I have already given you a dead king, Biden. <laughs> I think that's funny. He calls Biden the dead king. He says, I've already <laughs> given you a dead king. Beware the woman in the back. Mm. which I'm assuming refers to Kamala Harris. Yeah. He says, beware, the woman in the back will lay you open as a fish is split down the belly. So she's going to be really bad is what I'm understanding. Let me read that again. It's short, but I want to read it without my interruptions now. It says, my son, I will make America as Shiloh as I have already given you a dead king. Beware, the woman in the back will lay you open as a fish is split down the belly. Okay. Now, a year later, um, 
very short little phrase here, but uh, April, and this gave me a very big clue as to the timing, because this is kind of the thing uh, that, uh, and I uh, saw what Sony uh, commented there, and yes, that may be true. Uh, there are dreams that have seen that. Um, on April 28, 2022, a message called Three Times Hotter, he said, the death of the current king will go down, will go with the death of the dollar. So the current king in this message would be Joe Biden. And um, so as Sonny was, was talking about how he may already be dead and they've got actors doing like deep fake videos and stuff that may be true. So I don't know if he's already died and we just don't know it and they're pretending or if uh, he's going to die and then they're going to pretend after that. Hold on, brother. All right, we'll be right back for our final question. Ants think summer all winter. I'm sure all winter long ants say, this won't last long, we'll soon be out of here. What a neat philosophy, what a neat attitude. This won't last long, we'll soon be out of here. First warm day, they're out. Now if it turns cold again, they'll dive back down, but first warm day, they're out, they can't wait to get out. What a neat philosophy, can't wait to get at it. We teach in leadership skills. Average people look forward to getting off. Successful people look forward to getting on with it. The guy doesn't want off, he wants on. And that's what starts to transform his life, into the doing, into the activity. Now here's the last of the ant philosophy. How much will an ant gather during the summer to prepare for the winter? Answer, all he possibly can. What an incredible philosophy, the all you possibly can philosophy. You gotta come up with a philosophy of how much should you do. Shelf gave me the best answer when I was 25 years old. Here's what he said. Do all you can. Extendivite is more than just a heart tonic. Do you have any of these symptoms? Night cramps in the hands and feet. Your arms and legs often go to sleep. On short walks, do your legs get aches and pains? Is your memory worse than it used to be? Ankles that swell late in the day? Has your blood pressure increased lately? If you answered yes to even one of these questions, you may have early warning signs of arterial blockages. Your body is saying that it is time to take Extendivite. These are not the normal signs of aging. They are the warning signs that accompany blocked arteries. Get your Extendivite today. Extendivite is available in capsule or liquid form for just $69.95 for a two-month supply. To get started, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. True initiation is an inward journey. It's a spiritual path that is totally inward. It has nothing to do with anything external to you. I want to determine if the grand architect is indeed what I believe it to be, which is the artificial intelligence. The initiatory path is one of self-discovery and self-revealing. It's not a journey that someone can hold your hand through. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you through the steps of initiation. Remember, you are divinity. Step Beyond the Veil with Chris and Sherry Geo. Fridays and Saturdays, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio.
welcome back everybody for a final portion. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move back into the material. And uh, just a real quick comment though, um, in reviewing and hearing what I have, uh, I do agree with you, uh, Zach, in your assessment because this fully reminds me of Jeremiah and the warnings that he gave to the nation and to the kings and how nobody wanted to listen to him or or hear him because it was not the thing that they wanted to hear and not the thing exactly uh, yeah so yeah. let's turn it back over to you brother okay thank you zen i appreciate that confirmation um yeah so uh, one thing i was mentioning is i you know through all the dreams and things i've accumulated uh you know and studied i I've, I've been trying to put things in order and i've i've Definitely, I'm pretty. I'm confident I have the right order. And as we talked about, and I think our previous time, the first domino, the first dramatic event that's going to be the launching moment. When you know it's the moment when you know everything else is going to begin is when mm -hmm. the economy collapses. Mm -hmm. The economy economic collapse is the first thing, as far as I can tell. And so this is telling me. If this is God, he's saying the death of the current king will go with the death of the dollar. So he's saying that Biden will die in tune with the death of the dollar. Uh -huh. I don't know exactly if the time will be like the same day the stock market falls or or what if it's talking about a process, but um, that's what that's indicating. So that, that mm -hmm. tells me the political shaking and the economic shaking will go very close hand in hand. Right. All right. From a, a word, I didn't write the date for this one. The word, the message was called surprise attack. And it was sometime between April 28th and June 11th of last year, 2022. Uh, but this is actually the whole message. I put the whole message because I thought it was important. It's not real long. It says, my son, warn my sleeping body. And God repeatedly says the church is asleep. And that, and not just to you be ready. He said it. He's shown it in all kinds of things, including the Dana Coverstone dreams. My son warned my sleeping body of the surprise attack that will come in the months ahead. It will not be expected. Yet my body has been warned. My body continues to ignore my warnings, and continues to promote a man, Donald Trump. They think will save them. Hey, you know, I, one one thing I just want to say, and I don't think we definitely don't have time tonight to dig in this a lot, Zen, but something to, to be thinking about and researching, maybe we can talk about it next time we get together on here, mm -hmm. is that there are some theological understandings that UB Ready has shared from God that have kind of revolutionized my my understanding of some things. And... They shot. They surprised me at first. And then I would go research them, and I'd realize, hey, that's actually biblical. It, there's no nothing unbiblical about it. Uh, and one of them was that in one message, and I don't have it quoted here. God says very clearly to you, be ready. He says that fifty percent of the people attending church are not saved. Then he says, that doesn't surprise me. And he said, another 30% are asleep uh -huh. and 20% are awake and, and they are my remnant. And then in another place, God says it like this. He, he explains to him and he says that not everybody in his body is part of his bride. Right. And I had always thought the body of Christ is the same as the bride of Christ. Uh -huh. But he's saying no. He's saying the bride is a subset of the body. Yeah, makes sense that, to me. That everyone in the body is saved, but the bride is special. And those are believers that are mm -hmm. very much walking in obedience with him. And then mm -hmm. there is a subset of the bride that are called the remnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and and basically, the bot those those Christians who are saved, who are not, who are of the body, but are not part of the bride they are not going to have the same intimacy with Jesus for eternity that the bride right. has. Right. They are, they're called guests. They're, those are the ones who are guests at the wedding feast of the Lamb. 
They're not the mm-hmm. bride, they're the guests. Yes. And they're yes. always going to be outside the city. Mm-hmm. And the difference is obedience. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me continue. Absolutely. And oh, uh, real quick, Pat, uh, yeah. just a real quick quote to share with you. Uh, in the Gospel of Thomas, it says, um, I will call you one from 1,000, two from 10,000. And that's uh, Yeshua uh, mm. speaking. Yeah. Okay, so it says, uh, all right, so let's see. My body continues to ignore my warnings and continues to promote a man, Trump, they think will save them. Just as the surprise attack at Pearl Harbor was known but ignored, so will this mm-hmm. attack completely catch Mystery Babylon by surprise. This attack will leave the nation in darkness, as I have said is coming. Darkness leads to gross darkness, which leads to absolute black. Many of my people will perish in the darkness as they were not prepared. Uh, and I believe this may be referring to the EMP, uh, which would be phase three. Mm-hmm. He said, many of my people believe they will escape the coming darkness, which is belief in the rapture before the tribulation. Yes. He says, many of my people believe they will escape the coming darkness, but I say you will learn to walk in great faith or you will perish. Many of my people will suffer great persecution, and many will perish, but I am with you. During the darkness, many will come to know me, and none will fear death. I say unto you, repent now, repent now, repent now. For in persecution, you will not repent. That is key to me. He's saying that Christians who don't repent now will will not repent during persecution either. Mm -hmm. They will they will fail God. My churches will be burned down. My children will be blamed for the darkness and they will be hunted down for sport. Just as in the days past when my children were burned on stakes for light, so it will be again. Stand strong, seek me in all things, stay in my word, stay on your knees, my remnant, the time to shine will be in the darkness. I love you, my children, Amen, the Lord Jesus. So that, I mean, I don't want to move on too fast. That's just, go read that word. Go, you know, everybody go uh, look that one up. Surprise attack was the name of it. Hear it yourself. He's telling us what's coming. He's telling us how to be. Um, all right. Now, a uh, message on, uh, that came on June 11th, 2022. Uh, the message was called blindsided. He said, many of my children will be blindsided and will not get up. My children want to think the king, Biden, and the government will protect them. And I know I know a lot of uh, conservative Christian Americans that think that even though they don't approve of Biden, they think that the military is going to protect them, that the U.S. government is going to protect them. Uh, All right. Uh, July 4th, 2022. Uh, two messages. Uh, he did a double. He, re- he revealed two visions at the same time. Uh, they were called Red Sky and Signed. Uh, I believe this was released on July 4th. Said, I put a king in power after their own heart. That would be Trump. Uh, prideful and arrogant and selfish man, yet all my body did was cheer on the devil of a man who finds repentance and annoyance. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a caveat. This was released in 2022, and this could be referring to Biden. This one may be referring to Biden, not Trump. So I'm just going to read it as it is and not put anybody's name in. So I put a king in power after their own heart, a prideful and arrogant and selfish man, yet all my body did was cheer on the devil of a man who finds repentance and annoyance. There is no repentance coming from the king. So you, my body, will reap what you have sown. Many feel the same way as the king. Why repent? I haven't done anything wrong. Repent now for the sin of ignorance. Repent now for selfish pride. Okay. Um, Now, here is a a very clear detail from the future. All right. July 11th, 2022, in a message called Chaos Ahead. He said, the previous king, 
which would be Donald Trump, will emerge and take control of the nation and will have full military power to do so. Now, that is a very specific prophecy that if you're lying or making something up, you don't say something like that because you could get right, through right. wrong very easy. Mm-hmm. But this is telling us that the military is going to put Trump back in power at some point. Wow. It says the right side of this nation will celebrate while the left side, still in shock, will start the chaos. The king, Trump, will initiate martial law and lock down the nation until control is reestablished. So what that pr- prophecy is saying is that the military is going to put Donald Trump in power. He'll have the full authority given to him by whoever's in power, the military, wherever else, and that he is and that the left is going to go berserk and cause chaos and that Trump is going to lock down the whole country and declare martial law until he's fully uh, establish control. That now, is pretty heavy. I which would make sense to me with yes. what he just went through and having, you know, his yes. presidency terminated. Right. And I have to ask myself, under what circumstances would uh, the military do that? And I think, well, let's say that the economy is destroyed, yes. World War Three is raging. And Kamala Harris is violating everybody's civil rights in the Constitution Uh and persecuting people Uh and and going crazy. In those circumstances, I could see the military doing that. Yeah, murder on the streets. Man. So, but it would have, I think we would have to have an extreme situation, I think, for that to happen. Um, All right. A message called uh, uh, America Time is Up. Uh, July 21st, 2022 says, my son, I have heard the cries of my children to bring back normalcy, a time of peace and prosperity to bring back a king, Trump, that will give you all your desires. But I have not heard the cries for repentance from my body or from those who call themselves my body. There is no repentance in my church. How do you think I can move when my church is so sin-filled? My son, I have put into power the kings of nations to reflect the hearts of their people. America, you have a current king to reflect your heart, which is Biden. America, you are prideful, thinking no one can touch you. But I have my tool of indignation poised to conquer this nation. America, you are forgetful not remembering that I am in control, not a king that will lead you to hell. My son, all I have asked is that this nation repent, not from a few of my remnant, but from the king on down. This will never happen as sin is too ingrained into every facet of this nation. The current king will expire, which would be Biden, He said the current king, Biden, will expire and true evil will take control. Prepare, for this is coming very soon. This evil will be unprecedented and many will not believe this is America. But it is as is your hearts. So um, there are many people that have seen Biden uh, die of a heart attack while in office. Nobody has seen him resign. So that matches that. And the true evil taking control would be, I guess, Kamala Harris. So apparently she's going to go crazy in persecuting Christians and others. And uh, that would be, I guess, impetus for the military bringing Trump in at some point. In a message called Sound the Alarm from July 22nd, 2022, he says, This king will take this nation into the world system, and those who praise this king will follow him gladly. That's referring to Biden. In a message called Caught Unaware from, uh, no, wait, that's uh, repeated. Voice silence. Let's see. I know we're running out of time here. Okay. Um, Okay. This one is another detail. In a message called The Resisters from August 17th, 2022. 
He says, my son, very soon, this nation will be thrown into chaos. The previous king, Trump, will be taken under the law and much violence will begin. My people who have believed a lie will be resistant to me and judgment upon America will proceed. Mystery Babylon will cease to be a nation. Her sins will have destroyed her. So, um, I don't know. Um, so this is saying that Trump's going to be arrested. All right. Now that I don't know when it's referring to because um, Dana Coverstone had a uh, dream called Biden's house. And in that he saw this, I believe it was Biden's house. He saw the same thing. He saw Trump uh, under arrest, beaten up and standing in the house of representatives where, uh, you know, liberal politicians were screaming at him. Now, I don't know though. Here's here's the thing I don't know about this word. Is this, is it is it is this happens before the military puts him in control or after? Like right, because right. he's gonna be removed by Obama at some point. Because other people have seen that in other dreams. So I don't know if it's Kamala Harris has him arrested, violence breaks out, and then the military eventually puts Trump in power. Or this is talking about Obama taking him out of power after he's taken power. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see. In August 26, 2022, in a word called Whoredoms of America, he says, do you feel the captivity yet? This nation must fall and never rise again. Israel's time of trouble is at hand as I press them in the wine vats. America, your time is up. Watch what I am is about to do to this foul nation. Your king will fall, which is Biden, and the land will divide. Your cities will burn to ruinous heaps and death will be as common as the birds in the air. So, um, the, the, the phrasing there says your king will fall and the land will divide makes me think that the the well yeah we know the civil war is coming after biden's death not before that makes sense okay yeah um, the economic collapse go ahead. say I what i was just gonna say the economic collapse you said was with his death and it kind of reminds me of you know like Methuselah, uh, his death was preceding the flood of Noah's day, and mm -hmm. all that came in with, um, you know, so there always seems to be some kind of death significance with great yes. change. Let's see, um, I've got a few, I think we can squeeze a few more in here. I'm not going to quite get to the end of these, um, but... Yeah, we still have eight minutes. So. Okay, uh, no, let's see. This one is important. On, in a message called Dark Days Ahead on August 28, 2022, he said, The days of the King Biden are numbered as the food and money will both cease to be in abundance. The fat nation will go, grow tired of no food to eat and take to the streets, looking for those who have food and wealth to steal, kill, and destroy. As more and more of my children are lured into the false pagan religions, beware of the Nicolaitans and the temptation to bind yourself to sin, my son, the warring king, which is Trump, will add war to the nation without food. So he's saying here that Trump will be um, adding war to the nation without food. And that makes me think that maybe uh, the arrest of Trump that was referred to earlier is coming after Trump is put back in control. Let's see if, what's, uh, if there's any other that are. Uh, 
Let's see. Well, let me just read the next one here. Um, it says the nation, and the message called "The Nation Has Turned," September second, twenty twenty-two. Short word says, "My son, this nation has turned its back to me and rebelled against my word. The king of this nation, Biden, continually uses my name in vain." Um, I may stop with this one, and we can, if there's any quick questions, we can do that. But on a in a message called "And the Door Shut" from September fourth, twenty twenty-two. You be ready. Put this trans when he typed this out. He typed it in all caps, uh, which may, and it's the only time he did that really, or one of the few times that made me feel like he felt like God was really upset in this message and saying this forcefully. But he says, "My son, what is coming to the sin-soaked, prideful, arrogant nation will catch my sleeping, lukewarm church totally off guard." While they watch the perils of presidents, I will remove the candlestick, and gross darkness will cover this land. You blind, deaf people following a blind, deaf king will wake up too late, and the door will be shut. I say to those with ears to hear, repent, repent now, for real terror is at your door. Turn from your sins and turn to me. I will forgive you. Don't be left outside the door. So there's a few more, but I don't think we have time to really squeeze them in. I did want to say, you know, see if there's any quick questions. Anybody had a question? Or you had a question, Zen, or anything I can elaborate on? Well, I was just thinking that, um, you know, since I've been out a little while, why don't we go ahead and schedule like within the month? to do another uh, follow-up so sure. that we can catch up. Yes, and, um, and maybe maybe people can uh, continue to post questions in the chat here or in the comments, and we can answer those during the next session as well. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll put a you know notice out for questions. And those of you that come into the archives, when you listen to this, uh, do go ahead and send questions in and Zach, if you would provide an email address or <coughs> contact for them to do that, and then uh, we can be mm -hmm. ready with those for the next show as well. And we'll go <coughs> ahead and get it scheduled <coughs> within the month. Sounds good. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> just choked on some water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my email is uh, <coughs> Zach Mason seven seven at hotmail dot com. If you want to email me directly. <clears throat> Man, sorry, I just choked on some water. Yeah, no but yeah you can email me directly. It's uh, ZachMason77 at Hotmail.com, or you can uh, comment on one of my videos or contact me through my YouTube channel. If you have any questions about prophecy and dreaming, or if you want to bring attention <laughs> To Zach about a specific, um, you know, somebody or a message or something, feel free to share whatever, and we'll get Zach to comment about it, to review it, and we'll try to include it as best we can, uh, moving into uh, the next progression of shows, and we'll try to catch up and bring this um, to where we are now, because I think this is important especially with all that's going on in the world. These are certainly uncertain times, and they have been spoken about in the Illuminati protocols, <coughs> mentioned, prepared for, organized, and orchestrated for a very long time. And we are coming to that prophetic fulfillment, and we right. are that generation without a doubt. That's right. And I would, uh, one final thing, thought is just... Uh, People were asking, well, what part of God's law do we keep? I'd say that the law of Moses is God's heart. It shows his heart for how we're how he wants us to live. So while we're those of us who are covered in the blood of Christ, we're no longer under the penalty of that law. You you the law isn't going to get you into heaven, it's the blood of Christ that gets you into heaven. But we still have the law of Moses as an example of of how to show God's love. So 
if you're grateful for being saved through the blood of Christ, the way you show that gratitude to Jesus himself is by keeping his commandments. And that's what he said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. This, this, this is iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio makes you want to move. When you have a great melody, a song will connect Ever. Instantly connected. I love it when the beat goes. Did you know you can listen to Truth Frequency Radio on iHeartRadio? Just download the app to your smart car, smartphone, or smart TV and get the best of TFR wherever you are. iHeartRadio. I'll see you there. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You've been the big guy for six months now in the world. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this video and this broadcast. We appreciate all of you and thank you for your patronage. Please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. God bless all of you and your seeking.